Hello everyone, I am Father Jonathan Emery and this is Socially Sourced, a video series on the social teaching of the Catholic Church. This is Episode 9, Economic Life. The social doctrine of the Church has an entire section on economic life. It largely reiterates the ideas of universal destination of goods and the common good in light of more concrete examples from the economic sector of society. From a biblical perspective, we are reminded that the blessings of God are in abundance, not in wealth or luxury. The prophets also warn against fraud, money lending, exploitation, and gross injustice, especially when directed against the poor. Though poverty is also shown by the Bible to open a person up to recognizing the natural order of creation, where the wealthy are shown to put their trust in their things and in the work of their own hands instead of trusting in God. Wealth exists to be shared. This is because the purpose of the economy is not the economy. The economy exists to be of service to humanity and the common good. Every economic system should have in mind both economic efficiency, which businesses naturally tend towards, and the promotion of human development in solidarity. It is for this reason that the Church warns against seeing development as nothing more than the process of accumulating goods and services. In fact, excessive accumulation of material goods easily makes people slaves of their possessions and of instant gratification. We call this consumerism. And it is one of the evils that can develop in a capitalistic society. This evil has infected the United States as we spend large amounts of our lives accumulating and then maintaining our stuff. Think of how much simpler and cheaper life would be if our homes were smaller, if we had less trinkets, if we had fewer or even no cars. One of the greatest pieces of evidence for the influence of consumerism in the U.S. is Thanksgiving weekend, as every year we gather with family and friends to share a meal and be thankful for our blessings followed immediately by the giant greed fest that is Black Friday. There is something seriously wrong when a person can give thanks for their blessings and within 24 hours trample someone to death in an attempt to get a slightly cheaper TV. Besides consumerism, capitalistic economies are capable of other abuses, mainly of human dignity, the worker, and the environment that have been mentioned in prior videos. However, the Church also recognizes that capitalism can be a healthy form of economic system if it is a properly regulated market economy, which recognizes the fundamental and positive roles of businesses, the market and private property, and is the resulting responsibility for the means of production, as well as free human creativity in the economic sector, all established within a strong legal framework which places the economy at the service of human freedom in its totality. The Church also teaches that a person should be free to make decisions in their economic matters. This is seen as a fundamental value and an inalienable right. Interfering with a person's economic decisions, mainly through extreme government control or through the removal of private property, is seen by the Church as both an attack on the dignity of that person and the common good, for it can diminish or outright destroy the spirit of initiative within a society. For this reason, communism and any forms of socialism that follow this pattern have been condemned and fought against by the church. As St. John Paul II said, the state has the moral obligation to enforce strict limitations only in cases of incompatibility between the pursuit of common good and the type of economic activity proposed or the way it is undertaken. Disturbingly, it is not usually discussed how communism, along with some forms of socialism, is actually an extreme form of the worst parts of capitalism. For in capitalism, the economy is largely controlled or manipulated by business leaders and government officials. These two groups are both quite powerful and can keep one another in check, preventing any one group from assuming total power. However, in communism, the government becomes the business leaders, leaving one very powerful group that can do whatever it wants. This makes it less surprising 
that wealthy and powerful individuals would be advocating for communistic ideals, which seems to go against what they would want. Join us next week for the final episode, The Political Community. God bless.